this is the story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world, whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. says of the word lose that it means to part with unintentionally, to mislay, miss, or let slip, to fail to keep control or maintain. Well, that's all right for such things as wallets, gloves, pens. But can you believe that it would be possible to part with a boat unintentionally, to mislay, let slip, or in short, to lose a hundred-ton schooner? I didn't believe it either until it happened to me. in Far Off Trails, transcribed with John Steele, adventurer. And we'll be back in a moment to tell you the real story. If I didn't have a few reminders, it'd be even hard for me to believe the whole thing happened. So I won't mind too much if I get a few funny looks when I tell it. I guess the thing first started when Big George Benson and I... Sunk all our dough in a worm-eaten schooner. Tried to run a trade route in the South Pacific after the war. We were tied up in the Tongas one night for supplies, and I was stretched out on deck half asleep when I heard footsteps on the rickety dock. First, I thought I was dreaming, because the Tongas was the last place I expected to hear footsteps like that. When they came up and stopped, I turned to see if my ears had heard right. They had. You're still here. That's good. I'm not too late. American, too. What? I was trying to think of any other shoes that might sound like a white woman's high heels. Mr. Benson owns this boat, doesn't he? Mm, half of it. The bow and main must belong to me. The boat is registered in his name. Yeah, that's for insurance. I still own I half know what of... you tell me. This is the starboard light, isn't it? Yep. And Mr. Benson is the one that I Look, if it's business, I can do just as good as George. It's business. You're sailing north toward the Gilbert Islands. Yeah. You want a passenger? A what? You do make stops at various small islands, don't you? Yeah, sure we do. Can but, you both uh... carry a passenger? Ship. Not boat. Well, what's the difference, boat, ship? There's a difference, believe me. Well, do I go along? <sighs> you don't get it. There's two of us, me and Big George. We don't have stewards, cooks, waiters, or How anything. How long will you be gone? Six weeks. But I'm telling you... I he... said it was business, and I meant it. I want to go along. I have $300. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah, that's enough. Money talks, is that it? Mm, maybe it was the red hair. I said it was business. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the way you came right back at me until you got what you wanted. Oh. <laughs> I bet when you get mad, you can really throw them. Don't try it. <laughs> I don't think I will. Can I come aboard now? I have my suitcase with me just in case you were going to leave. Them. Come on. I'll help you. Thank you. Hey, what's a girl like you out here riding the trades for anyway? That's if you don't mind my asking. I don't mind, but it's a long story. I got nothing better to do than listen. Is that your friend? Uh, where? The man with the flashlight. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Big George. Name fix him. He's quiet, but he's a good joke. I hope he's as easy to handle as you. What? Oh. <laughs> you waste time being nice to him. Some woman put the bite on him a long time ago, and he's a little What's bit stuck. Uh, we've got a passenger. What? I said we got a passenger. Since when? She just came aboard. Miss, uh... Dorothy Bourne. Uh, this is Big George, my partner. Johnny, you're nuts. You think so? Well, we get, get her off the ship. I told you, she's our passenger. Stow this stuff away, will you? Sure. I'll take care of the dame. Look, I made I a part... I'll take care of her. I know how to handle women. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Take care of her. You watch. I'll watch, too. I don't know what the deal is with Johnny here, but it's off. Is it? That's what I'm telling you. What's the matter? Aren't you in business to make money? Sure we are. That's why you aren't going along. I'm paying my way $300. $300 or 3000 Your don't partner get... agreed to it. Don't tell me you're afraid of women. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, yes, you, you are. You name it. Me. Get her off of here, Johnny. You were going to. Afraid to take a woman on his boat. In just a couple of seconds, I'm going to lose temper, my... Temper, temper. One more word, and I'm... Yes? All right. Get your things in the forward cabin. Johnny, I you... told her she could take the main state room, Big George. Yeah. Got to give our passengers the best if she's paying. You think the both of us can sleep forward? We've done it before. All right, all right. Put it wherever you want. I'll get started away. Uh, just a minute. The main cabin is below the aft companionway. 
I'll take the forward cabin. I don't want to bother Mr. Big George. <laughs> I should have warned you. About what? The red hair. Oh. Yeah, you should have. Little fire, Captain. Even so, it's going to be nice having a uh, <clears throat> passenger for a chain. Yeah. Too bad you got such a big hate on for women. Now, I'll break out the maze, will you? Sure. There's some weather coming up. I want to be outside when it hits. Of course. If you don't want to go for red hairs, then I'll see how Would I... You shut up. Sure. You don't need to get so hard about it. Sorry, Johnny. You kid too much sometimes. <laughs> Forget it. I'll cast off the stern lines. We'll let the tide carry us out. This storm's coming up fast. We stood out from the island of Lua in the Tongas, and by late afternoon the next day, I knew that Big George wasn't off the beam about the weather. Whatever was coming up behind us was a big one. I hadn't been a sailor very long, but I knew a storm, and I saw one coming, and this one looked like the granddaddy of all of them. We'd already reached Mainsville and Mississippi. The wind was up to 35 or 40 miles an hour. No rain, just dark clouds and wind. The starboard light was creaking and groaning as the waves piled up behind us. Night came quickly like a curtain being drawn over the sky. I was having a rough time at the wheel trying to keep her on heading when I felt somebody holding on beside me. Peace of the Unknown. There's much of these when in a moment we hear more in the story of John Steele, adventurer. I must have been exhausted because one moment I was leaning on the wheel with the wind whistling around my ears and the next I was awakened by the wheel cutting into my chest and hot sunlight burning against my face. The wind was gone and I tried to stand up and shield my eyes against the sun so I could see. The deck was tilted and I fell flat across the rail before I could get my balance. Then my eyes were working and what I saw made me yell for Big George. 
The starboard light was on her side, all right, in the middle of a jungle. Draped over the deck were trees, vines, leaves, and driftwood. Nothing but green vegetation, no water, no ocean anywhere in sight. What's up, kid? Should have woke me before. Look. What happened? We tried to sail through a jungle, that's all. Beached, huh? Can't even find the ocean. High tide and wind must have blown us right inland. And wind went and tide went out, too. That's why there weren't any waves. Sorry, I I must have fallen asleep. Oh, nothing you could have done anyway. What is it? Johnny tried to sail through a jungle. See, with the trees are broken down, we must have come in that way. What I'm trying to figure out is how we'll get her back in the water. Now I know what hit me last night. A leaf. A leaf from one of those trees. Probably. Well, now what? First, I think we ought to follow our tracks back to the water and see just how far we got to move her. It's a long way, as I know that much. Maybe we could wait for another high tide. That might be a year. Well, let's get started. The sooner we know how bad the job is, the easier we'll be able to... What? Something tearing at the ship. Tearing at the ship? Yeah, over the side. Over here. What is it? I don't know. Be careful. It's splitting open. Maybe the weight's in the wrong place. It beached before and it didn't give way. Got to stop it or we won't have a ship. That's it. The grain. Huh? It's wet and swelling from the heat. Rip off the planking in order to pour out. Get under that joint. Come on. Give me a hand. Pull the broken one off. Then it'll be easier. A couple of more ought to do it. Barter for pearls, pouring out all over the jungle. We can salvage some of it. We get the ship back in the water. Yeah. If. Help me down. Sure. I'll help her. I can do it. I'm down now, thanks. Let me go, John. Sure. Say, are you two coming? Yeah, yeah, we're coming. Strange island in the Pacific. It'll be fun exploring it. Yeah, fun. But I don't want to live here the rest of my life. Come on. started down the track of broken trees in the jungle. And it was hard going in spite of the trail the ship had made coming in. Big George was leading the way, looking right and left. We found the ocean almost a mile from the schooner and explored the rest of the island, or what we could of it. The shore was swampy, and the last third of the place we didn't see because we couldn't climb the cliffs to shut it off. But we knew the island was small, probably uninhabited. It was afternoon, and we were tired when we got back to the ship. I, for one, am tired. You didn't say anything about a cook's tour of the South Pacific, George. Hungry? Famished. Uh, how about showing us that cooking you bragged about? All right. I think you'd better get our stuff and camp outside. Why do that? That's a very thickly populated jungle, and I don't mean by people. We could stay aboard. Suit yourself. But in that slamming cabin, you get seasick. Take my word for it. Yeah, yeah, I remember a crazy house that had a tilted room and, uh... What about the crazy house? What's the matter with you, Johnny? Isn't that the hole where the grain poured out? Sure it is. And where's the grain? Huh? It ought to be under the hole, huh? Sure. I... Hey, that's funny. Maybe it didn't all come out. Let's see. Hole's empty. It all poured out. Then where is it? There was 20 tons of grain in there. There ought to be a big pile here on the ground. Maybe the birds ate. Oh, they're not that many birds. Animals. They're some pretty big animals. There's a few spots on the ground, just a couple of kernels. You see any tracks, uh, paw marks or anything? No. This is nuts. I'm still hungry. Yeah, so am I. Well, I'll go up and whip up something. Yeah. You need some help? I can make it. I'll make a stir for you. Here. Grab the rail. I got it. And hurry it up. I want to find out how good a cook you are. You'll find out, all right. Jenny. Yeah, Big George. I wouldn't do it if I was you. Huh? Do what? Go for her. Dottie? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? There's plenty of other girls around. Or there will be when you get back to the States. Not many like her. Maybe not. But you're just woman hungry because you've been away so long. What's eating you, Big George? You going for her yourself? I just thought I'd warn you, kid. Okay, you did. She's not your kind. Oh, I don't know. I'm telling you, she's not. You sound serious. I am, Johnny. I thought you were a woman hater. I just don't want to see you get hurt. Fatherly, huh? Maybe. I won't get hurt. Just don't make a pitch for her, kid. With that red hair? <laughs> I don't guarantee it. I know you pretty well. I'm just telling you, leave Dottie alone. It's not that easy, George. It better be. She's just another woman to you, and that's what I don't like. Oh, I don't know. I do know, Johnny. I've been around too much. Big George, the woman hater. All right. I warned you. 
Now, come on. Let's get some stuff out of the ship and make it camp before it gets dark. Tomorrow we'll see if we can start moving it back to the ocean. <laughs> thinking of what Big George had said and wondered why he said it. Dolly worked right with us. We moved the starboard light exactly one foot in the entire day's work. And that night we were all tired and went right to sleep under the sailcloth tent. It was the sun again that woke me. And when I looked down the ravine where the ship lay on her side, something made me sit up quickly. The ship looked funny. There was something missing. The mast. Sure. I yelled for Big George and scrambled out of the mosquito netting and ran to the port side. What in the blue sun has happened now? What's up, Johnny? Come here and look. It's going to be a habit. You waking me up and yelling about... Hey, where's the man? That's what I'd like to know. But that isn't all. Half the ship is missing. Huh? You see, the keel's gone. All the ribs and planking from the underside. Both spread. Where'd they go? You tell me. It doesn't make sense. Even the rail's gone. Is anything wrong? Somebody likes our ship. What's the matter? Look. What happened? Somebody just stole half our ship during the night, that's all. You can't sail her like that. This place is nuts. Who'd steal half a ship? Well, looks like we're going to stay here for a while. Can't we find out who took them, George? I don't know what the pitch is, but we're going to get an answer. I'll get the rifles. Yeah, they haven't been taken, too. We'll have to stand watches night and day. And the other two will search the island. I don't get it. Who'd steal half a ship? Like you said, we're going to find out. And find out fast. Suspense and action. One leads to the other. And the result we'll hear in a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. That was the starter. We stood guard night and day and we searched the island as best we could. We didn't find any people, tracks, the ship parts. The next night, in spite of our standing watch, the rudder and deck house disappeared. One of us was awake all night, but we didn't hear a sound. Each day, we scoured the island, and each night, another piece of the starboard light vanished into thin air. It was almost ghost-like, and occasionally, we shot at hope. Two weeks, and the three of us were about ready for the nut house. There was no reason to try and move the ship now. There wasn't enough left of it to move, only parts of the deck. At night, we'd sit and talk and try to figure it out, just as you'd sit down and try to analyze how a magician pulls a trick your eyes don't believe. By the sixth week, we knew we'd have to do something, build a raft or build a house for the rainy season, and our food was running low. It was late afternoon, and Big George was out looking again when I got a chance to talk to Dottie alone. And a few other things, and I wouldn't mind staying here for a while, but with what we have now, it's not going to be any picnic, John. Dottie. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I don't want to ask about who you are, uh... Why, you came out here. I never told you, did I? No, but uh, you don't have... I came looking for somebody, John. Guy? Yeah, a guy. You expected to find him here? In in these islands? Yes. Fellow in the war? Yes, he was in the war. I see. A lot of good Joes were lost in this area. He wasn't lost. I know. You you don't need to tell me the rest. You know? Sure. And I give you a lot of credit for it. When they report a guy missing in action out here, he didn't turn up again nine times out of ten. If the Japs didn't get them, the jungle or the ocean did. Johnny, I think you're That's off That's all the... past, Dolly. You see, I, uh... You can talk to me. I warned you, Johnny. Huh? You wouldn't listen to me. Big George. I told Take you your arm I... away from her. Now, wait a minute. Get up. You're not going to tell me what to do. George! George, please! George! Stop! George! Will you stop and look? What? <laughs> I ought to take care of you. He'll be all right. I'll worry about him. I was trying to tell him and you hit him. Tell him what? Look behind you. Huh? Look. What? Who? Who's fighting to light a bullet? Who are, who are you? I know you're starting to shoot some more black water. Big me? George. Are you coming along the fight to me walk? Where'd you come from? Belong many small black water. Come get along you. What? I think he I think he wants us to follow him. Oh, God. You all right? Yeah, I guess so. A come along fight to hurry. Who's he? A come fight to hurry below your hide, brother. What is it? I don't know. Might be a gag of some kind to get all three of us at once. 
But anything's better than staying here, isn't it? Maybe there's a way off this swamp. Yeah. Come on. We followed the little half-naked black man through the jungle, and both Big George and I had our rifles ready. He led us through a swamp by a path we could never retrace, and up through a hidden crevasse on the side of the cliffs on the far end of the island, and then down to the sea on the other side. At no time did we see any other human beings, but the feeling was strong that other little black men were staring at us through thick undergrowth. But what stopped us cold was what we saw when we reached the sea. There in a tiny inlet, not more than 30 feet wide, riding easily at anchor, was a starboard light. Not in pieces, but complete, ready to sail. Even the stuff we'd left when we followed the little native was neatly laid out on the bank in front of us, waiting. We could only stare as the little man went into his speech. So you come hurry, quick or fast. So you go before what to go. Me, Lua, who follows? Take what belong you want to follow us. Lua, who follows? Need grain for sea bath. What grain belong you? What follows get ship belong water, but no much hands to move. So Lua, who follows? Take ship down to sticks. I move fast and put sticks in one here. Or I to follow her, bad trouble no more. Lua, who take grain, pay for it, and it's hot stuff work. What follows? Goodbye. He's gone. They floated the boat and returned for stealing the grain. There must be a thousand of them to do a trick like that. Come on, the tide's going out. Let's get aboard while there's still water to float her. Will you go with me, George? Where, Daddy? Home. For good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go. Hey. You see, Johnny, I tried to warn you. Go on, George. I want to tell him something. Sure. Don't make it too long. Friends? Huh? Oh, sure. Sure. But you didn't have to give me that gag about looking for a guy. I didn't. I was looking for Big George. He was lost when he came home from the war. He had a restlessness that he never had before. That's why he came back out here with you. I didn't understand. When I did, I came looking for him. You love him? He'll always be my husband. Yeah. I wasn't going to tell you about it until he didn't. He was too angry at me to talk. Yeah. You see, John, he knew you. And I knew you from his letters. <laughs> I'd have been just another of your passing fancies, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get under sail. That's it, friends. The story of a schooner that was lost in the far-off islands of...